Gene Ammons is Jewish. Ray Charles is very Jewish. <laughs> Al Jolson Goyish. My mission is to save jazz. It's kind of like the Sierra Club, working to protect communities, wild places, and the planet itself. I'm trying to protect and conserve a very vital form of expression that's endangered because of neglect. It shouldn't be because it's an art form that's the musical equivalent of democracy. That's why jazz is celebrated and prized all over the planet. Serious jazz fans are like that. We're very dedicated to the music and the remarkable people who create it. Each of us is a jazz activist. One of those fans, one of these activists, and someone who helped introduce me to the world of jazz was Lenny Bruce, the great comedian and censorship opponent. A lot of cats put you on, Mr. Wick, you know, but uh, you really play with a lot of soul, baby. <laughs> you remind me a lot of bird. I want to tell you, Paul Desmond really cooked his ass off. Because everybody from Sonic Stitt to Herb Geller sounds like bird, and at least Desmond's got his own sound. Lenny Bruce was a serious jazz fan whose own work was informed by the improvisational nature of jazz. Lenny worshipped the gods of spontaneity, candor, and free association. Uh, it might seem uh, odd to you that I'm laying a little heavy on jazz on the show, but I want to prove a point. I read in Winchell's column, uh, whenever I hear the jazz tutors, that's my cue to switch the dial. Well, I feel that jazz is great. It's a listening medium, and if it's presented right, it can swing and people will dig it. Yeah. In 1959, Lenny produced his own television pilot, The World of Lenny Bruce, and it features Lenny, and his musical friends, Buddy Rich and Harry Sweets Edison, Lambert Hendricks and Ross, David Allen, and a quartet that includes Philly Joe Jones, Teddy Kodak on bass, Bill Evans, and Cannibal Adderley. The show aired once on local New York television. Instead of just blowing, I figure sort of a gimmick. That's what it is, a gimmick, you know. As I told you, the original premise, we start out with something. I went to the Modern Museum of Art. I'm very interested in modern art. Uh, I know about it, so I feel I can report on it and I wanted to tie up modern art with modern jazz. So what I did, I filled some exteriors and interiors, and I want to have Cannonball, that's his nickname, Julian Adderley, to play along with the film. Now, I'm not going to put you on and tell you that this improvisation. I had him look at the film, do a little thought, and swing. So roll the footage, and, uh, yeah, roll the footage now. Roll the footage, Modern Museum of Art and Cannonball, swing, Daddy, make the theme. <coughs> Now, you and might think, you know, that, 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 that that's a bird tune, isn't it? It is. It is. Yes. Uh, what is it? Alan Shaw. What is it? Alucha. Yeah. Now, this was not as definitive as the bit that I'm going to get into. First, I, I know we've only got one camera because we're hung up preparing for another bit. But this is Cannonball. This is Mr. Kodak. Oh, yeah. And this is, uh, can you see Mr. Evans there on piano? I guess you can see, right? Yes. Yeah. And Philly Joe Jones. Uh, do a little bit of Dracula. Dra I'll do fours with you. Permit me to introduce myself. Permit me to introduce myself. We'll do a thing together. Now, this is Alan Shaw. Alan Shaw. Alan Shaw.
Yeah. Yeah, that was nutty. Like the jazz musicians he so greatly admired, Lenny Bruce told the truth, and ultimately, that led to his own destruction. He left us much, much too soon.